Hi, welcome back to Shawnee Hills Workshop. Today, we're gonna to be upgrading our dust collection. I added this cyclone several years ago, and when I did, it brought on a problem that I never even thought about beforehand. Used to, if I needed a piece of dust collection hose or something of that nature, a fitting, I could go to Woodcraft or Menard, some store, pick up a fitting, and be good to go. Well, now that I'm running six inch mains, you just can't go and pick those up. So I had to turn to the internet. At that time, I found a website called Win Environmental. And it is hands down the best place to pick up um, dust collection accessories. And so for years, I've been buying my six inch hose, flexible hose from them. So I contacted Win Environmental and asked them if they'd be interested in teaming up on a project together. And they immediately said yes. And it turns out it was perfect timing because they had several ideas that they wanted to get out on the market. and these aren't necessarily things they sell, but it's ideas that you can use with the things they sell. And that's what makes this plenum box different than any other one you have seen. Now these three new things that they're introducing all revolve around this. A gamma seal bucket lid. This is a lid system that snaps onto any five gallon bucket and makes it an airtight seal. Screws on, screws off. And it was, it was originally intended for food storage. There's three new things that I'm going to be introducing to you today. One of them is easily removable filters. This is especially good if your, your filters are in a tight spot or you just don't want to clean them on the inside. You'd rather take them outside and blow them off. The second is an inspection port for your plenum box. So if for some reason you need to get in there and adjust something, you can. And the last is an easy DIY manometer. I've upgraded mine a little bit and I'll show you that in the video as well. So if you want to take it to the next level, you can do that too. Now, if you're using my plans, you're probably gonna to wanna to start the same way, way I am, by installing your lids on the buckets before you cut them. Now, that's because every five gallon bucket is a little bit different from one another. And since I'm using the CNC to cut out my parts, I wanna know the exact diameter of the holes that need to be cut. I wanna make sure that the hole I cut in my plenum box is the exact size of the bucket. Now, you'll wanna install it before you cut the bucket off. If you cut the bucket off first, it's just that much harder to get the lid on. So you can use a uh, rubber hammer, a dead blow mallet, whatever, you just need to, uh, you know, drive this down onto the bucket. And just like that, you have an airtight screw on, screw off lid. So now that we've got that done, I'm gonna go to the bandsaw and cut the lid off. Now, if you don't have a bandsaw large enough to cut a bucket this size, you can use a jigsaw, you can use an oscillating multi-tool, you can use a handsaw. There are so many options to get this cut. Installing the gamma seal lid is really easy. Now you want to make sure that your holes are cut just big enough for the bucket to fit, but with not any slop. It's better if you cut it just a little small than sneak up on it. Once you get it in, you're going to make a reference line to mark so you know that you can put it back in the same spot and pre-drill several holes around the edge. After you've done that, you take your lid back out, you can put a nice bead of caulk, whether that be a silicone, a liquid nail, something of that nature, just to seal it off. Then reinstall the ring, line up your mark, and install your screws. 
Now if your bucket lid protrudes at all beyond the cabinet, now's a good time to go ahead and take your knife and trim it flush. Having a solid lid on the top of our filter doesn't do us any good, so we need to cut a hole in it. But we need to cut it in a way that makes it easy to attach to the top of the filter. When Environmental has a very detailed drawing on their website showing exactly how this needs to be cut out, but I'll give you a brief overview and then show me doing it. On the underside of the lid, you'll see four indentions here, and you'll need a 5 8 inch hole centered right up against the edge. And then you'll need to cut away this rib material slightly away from the edge. Now you'll want to take your time and make as clean as cuts as possible, and any burrs or anything, just sand those off slightly. So now here is where things get different. This is a non-flange filter. Now typically what these have been used for is when you're stacking two filters on top of one another, you'll have the flange one at the top, and then the second one will mount up underneath it. So there's no need for a flange. Well, using this, we can attach a gamma seal lid to both sides, one side screwing onto the plenum box and the other side screwing onto our waste bucket. So now I'm gonna show you how easily those gamma seal lids attach to these filters. I want to point out that you want to be very careful handling this. The manufacturer recommends that you wear gloves because there could be a sharp edge that could get you caught on your fingers. You know, like here where the seams are connected on the uh, cage on the outside, on the filter on the inside. So use your own judgment and take precautions. On the top side, the filter comes with this gasket. When Environmental sells these clips, and they are very similar to a hose clamp, and they have two little hooks on each side, and they're just perfect. Right where you drilled your 5 8 inch holes, it'll slide in there and it'll clip on the inside of the filter and on the bucket, and then you can just tighten it up. Now, you don't want to tighten this so tight as to distort the plastic. That can make possible air leak, but you want to tighten it up good and snug. The top side comes with a gasket attached to it. On the bottom side, there's a loose gasket. You can either use a loose gasket to attach the lid or you can just put a bead of silicone. Now I'm doing one each way to see which way works the best. So we'll use a gasket on this one. On the other one, we'll use a bead of silicone. Now you only have about a half inch of surface around the gamma seal lid that's flat. So you gotta make sure you get this gasket just right. And there we have it, two completed filter assemblies. We've got the bucket on the bottom to catch any larger particles that get past our cyclone. We've got the gamma seal lid on the top to connect it to the filter box. Now, we just gotta install it all. So before we finish this up, I just kinda wanna set it here to kinda give you an idea of how large this is. I'm 5'10", and it comes up to about my nose. Um, so, you know, think about that. If you're planning on stacking two, make sure you've got the height to do that. Or if you're trying to build this into a mobile cart for a um, single stage type desk collector, realize, you know, you need height. The bucket, and the filter together are about 51 inches tall. Now there's one more step that we need to do before we add the front face. Wind Environmental recommends that you line the inside with carpet. Not a thin carpet like an indoor outdoor, but a real good thick quality carpet. You do this for sound attenuation. Doing this can result in a five to eight dB reduction. For those of you that don't know much about decibels, for every 10 decibels you add in noise level, you've doubled the noise. So a five to eight decibel noise reduction is quite a bit, especially in a small shop. Now, I don't know how important this is or isn't for me since this is gonna be inside a mechanical room on the side of my shop, but I still intend on doing it. Now, because of the current lockdown, I don't have any carpet here and I can't put any carpet in, but I do have some one inch foam. So I'm gonna put the one inch foam in and then afterwards, if I still feel like it needs to be quicker, I'll pull off the port on the front that I'll show you later and um, add carpet to it then. So wow, they're in place. Um, now it's just as easy as unscrewing them if I need to take them down for any reason to uh, get inside the plenum, or if I need to take them outside and spray them out with the air hose. Just uh, that quick and easy. At the beginning of the video, I told you there were three new things that Wynn Environmental wanted to do using the Gamma Seal lids. 
I already showed you the first, which is an easily removable filter using the Gamma Seal lid. The second is an inspection port. So for any reason you need to get inside your box to be able to make a repair or to see something, you can easily get in there by unscrewing the lid, getting in, doing the repair, making the inspection, and then putting the lid back on, having an airtight seal. The third is a DIY manometer. Wind Environmental has detailed instructions on their website showing you step by step how to make it using a Gamma Seal lid. Once the lid is made, you can then use tubing to run over to a simple U-bend manometer. But if you want to, you can step it up and a little bit nicer, just like I did here. I have two options for sale on my website, shawneehillsworkshop.com, and I'll put a link in the description. The first is just like this. It's round and the size of a Gamma Seal lid, and it's mounted in a way that it can stay vertical while you screw on and off the lid so you don't dump all your water out of your manometer. The second is for a remote mount option. So you can mount this on a wall somewhere where it's easily visible, and then you run a tube from the port on your Gamma Seal lid over to it. The remote mount version will be available in paint grade and stain grade, while the round option will only be available in paint grade. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you don't like it, hit the thumbs down button, but tell me why you do or don't like it so I can improve. If you're in need of a filter system yourself, check out winenv.com. I'll put a link in the description to there and also to my website where you can purchase a manometer kit if you want to do that yourself as well. Thanks for watching.